Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 4, Lesson 4, Transformations of Linear Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to apply translations to linear functions, apply dilations to linear functions, and apply reflections to linear functions. Let's learn translations of linear functions. First, a family of graphs includes graphs and equations of graphs that have at least one characteristic in common. The parent function is the simplest of the functions in that family. The family of linear functions includes all straight lines, with the parent function being f of x equals x, or if we were to change f of x to y, just y equals x. That's the simplest line that you can make. This is also called the identity function. A transformation, which means you're changing it somehow, is going to move the graph on the coordinate plane, which creates new linear functions. So they might be steeper, flatter, they might be flipped, they might be moved up, down, left, or right. Those are your transformations. The first type of transformation is called a translation. In this context, a translation is a transformation where you slide a figure from one position to another without turning it off. So you can slide it up, you can slide it down, left, or right, or you could do multiple of those at the same time. But no matter what, you're not turning the line, so it's never getting steeper or flatter. There are two types of translations. So first is a vertical translation, where we can move it up or down. In a vertical translation, the constant k is going to be added to the end. This makes the line move up or down. So if we see here, we have g of x equals x. Essentially, that right there, again, that's y. That is our parent function. And we can see there's something added to the end here. So whatever number that is, is going to either move it up or down. And that's a vertical. So if k is greater than 0, then it's going to move how many ever units k was up. So if k was 5, then it would move 5 units up. And every point on the line is going to shift 5 units up. If that k value is less than 0, then every point is going to shift that many units down. So for example, let's say we had negative 3 at the end there. This is going to tell us that it's going down 3. Here it says that it's the absolute value and moving down. But if you just see this negative and know that that means go down, it's meaning the same thing. So down three or down how many ever. So if you saw down minus K, know you're gonna go down how many ever K is. Example one, vertical translations of linear functions. Describe the translation in G of X equals X minus two as it relates to the graph of the parent function. So if we remember this is just Y and our parent function, which parent functions are gonna be extremely important to remember throughout this year, in this module, the parent function is y equals x. That's a linear parent function. We want to figure out what happened to it. So the only real change here is that we now have that minus 2 at the end. So in this case, because it's added to the end, it's k is 2. Or if you say k is negative 2, that works as well. What's happening is we are adding negative 2 to our parent function. Where it's added is also important to consider. So the fact that that minus 2 is at the end and not grouped with x, that means k is affecting the output or the y values. Now, since k is less than 0, we have negative 2. That would mean that the graph is translating absolute value of that down, or essentially 2 units down. So long story short, x minus 2 is the translation of the parent function 2 units down. And as we can see right from the beginning, minus 2 that means that we took the parent function and we went down 2. And we can see that because numbers added at the end are going to move it up or down. Check your understanding. Describe the translation shown as it relates to the parent function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that x minus 1 is a translation of the graph one unit down. Again, we see that minus 1. So the one is how many units, that minus tells us that we need to go down. Let's learn horizontal translations. So when a constant h is subtracted from the x value before you even plug it in, the result is a horizontal translation, h for horizontal. The x-intercept then gets translated left or right. So if you notice here, this time, instead of our y equals x, inside the parentheses, meaning they're doing it first, we are doing something to that x, and that's what's going to shift it left or right. Now, for this, notice it is already a minus sign in there. 
when you're reading this, think about it as the opposite of h. So x is going to move the opposite of h. When h is greater than 0, it's going to be translated to the right. So if h was 5, it's going to translate to the right 5. Now, why I'm saying think of it as the opposite, it's going to look like x minus 5, but you're actually shifting it to the right in the positive direction. So if you think of it as the opposite of that, then you'll go the right direction. If h is less than 0, then it's just going to be translated to the left. Again, think of it as the opposite of h. So you're going to end up seeing where it looks like this. Where it's going to be x plus h. Because there's going to be a double negative there, which would essentially make it positive. So again, opposite, we'll move it the direction you need. Example 2, horizontal translations of linear functions. So here we want to describe the translation shown as it relates to the graph. So again, our parent function is just y equals x. So what happened to it this time? We have plus 5 done to the x beforehand because it's in parentheses. Because it's done beforehand, our new function g of x is equal to f of x and then the opposite of h, where we want h to be negative 5. So g of x is equal to x plus 5 really is saying g of x is equal to f of x minus negative 5. That's where that plus comes in, that double negative. Because it's grouped with h, it's going to affect the input or the x values, but it's just going to be translated the opposite of what we see. So we see plus 5 there, meaning it's going to be translated absolute value of negative 5 or 5 units left. So g of x, when it's equal to the quantity of x plus 5, that just means it was translated left or right, but the opposite of plus 5, so minus 5, it went 5 units to the left. Check your understanding. Read the transformation and describe how it relates to the parent function. Pause the video now, complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that it's going to move 12 units to the left. So opposite would make it go the negative direction, this many units, 12. Example 3, multiple translations of linear functions. So describe the translation as it relates to the graph. Here we can see there are two things done to it. So our original is just y equals x. We add minus 6 beforehand and then adding 3 at the end. So when we're doing this, we just have to think about all the things that happened. So first, we did the opposite of h, then we added k, where h is 6 and k is 3. So g of x is really just f of x minus 6 plus 3. We're going to think about these the same way as we did before, just doing both together. So first, we have to do h because that's in parentheses. So it was translated minus 6, so the opposite of that. So to the right, 6. And then same k value. So opposite of h, but the same k. So plus 3 means it's going to go up 3. So overall, this went 6 units to the right, then up 3. And that is how it was translated. Let's learn. Dilations of linear functions. The second type of transformation that can happen to functions is called a dilation. So a dilation either stretches or compresses the graph of a function. When a linear function is multiplied by a positive constant a, then the result is a vertical dilation. So just like last time, notice a is outside, and that produces a vertical dilation. So when it's outside of the parentheses, it's going to be vertical. Also notice it does say positive constant, so we're not dealing with any negative numbers for dilations. So a vertical dilation involves multiplication, and it will stretch it vertically or compress it vertically. Essentially, all we're doing is changing the slope. So if a is greater than 1, or the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then the graph gets stretched vertically away from the x-axis. So the slope just got a lot steeper. If we think about, instead of a, if we had used m, which stands for slope, right, we're at the very beginnings of our slope-intercept form. y equals mx, and then if we had a plus something at the end, as in a translation, there's our b. So that a value changes the slope. So if the absolute value of a is larger than 1, then it's going to make it have a steeper slope. A slope of 3 is steeper than a slope of 1. If the value of a is between 0 and 1, so let's say like 1 half, that's between 0 and 1, then it gets compressed toward the axis. So it starts getting squished back down flatter. So if you have a fraction of a slope, it's going to be a flatter line. Similarly, we have horizontal dilations. But just like a horizontal translation, 
it's when x is multiplied before it's plugged in. So notice we have the a inside the parentheses. So when it's inside the parentheses, we have our horizontal transformations. The good news is even if it's multiplied first, if a is greater than one, it's compressed towards the y-axis, meaning it got steeper. So it's compressed toward the y-axis, or if you think about the vertical, where it was away from the x-axis. A horizontal compression makes the line steeper, just like a vertical stretch. If the value is between 0 and 1, then it gets stretched away from the y-axis, again, towards the x-axis. So the movement is the same, but what you do need to be able to tell is if it's horizontal or vertical, and that all has to do with is it inside the parentheses or outside the parentheses. Inside is horizontal, outside is vertical. Let's learn reflections of linear functions. The third type of transformation is a reflection. So a reflection is a transformation where the figure, line, curve, etc., is flipped across a line. When a function is multiplied by negative 1, so if you remember in dilations how we only dealt with positives, this is why. Multiplying by negative 1, either before or after the function, results in a reflection across either the x or y axis. Depending on which you do, every x or y coordinate is just multiplied by negative 1. So if you do it beforehand, all the x-coordinates will be multiplied by negative 1. So first, let's look reflecting across the x-axis. So notice here the negative is out front. So they don't need to write the 1, they just can put a negative sign. But that negative is out front, outside of the parentheses, so the reflection is going to be vertical. It's going to go across the x-axis. When it's outside, every y-coordinate is multiplied by negative 1. So just change to the opposite. When the negative is inside the parentheses, it gets reflected horizontally. So it's going to be across the y-axis. And here we would just multiply every x-coordinate by negative 1 to make it the opposite. And if you remember with translations how we had negative h, if we think of the minus or the negative as the opposite, then what you're saying here is this is the opposite of x. You're changing it to the opposite coordinate. This is the opposite of y. Example 7. Reflections of linear functions across the x-axis. Describe how the graph of g of x equals negative 1 half x is related to the graph of the parent function. So here we actually have two transformations going on. So one, that negative tells us that it's a reflection, and that a value tells us that we are going to be dilating our line. So since we have our parent function f of x equals x, then g of x had to have multiplied by negative 1, then times a to our original function, which means that a is 1 half. So plugging in, we now have our new function as they tell us. Since the constant of 1 half is not grouped with x, right, it's not in that parentheses there, that means that it is vertically compressed. It's a fraction, it's going to make it go closer to the x-axis. The negative is also not grouped with that x, so the reflection is going to also be across the x-axis, because not group makes it vertical. So putting it all together, the graph of negative 1 half x is the parent function that's vertically compressed and reflected across the x-axis. So it got flatter, and then it was flipped. Check your understanding. How can you tell whether multiplying negative 1 by the parent function will result in a reflection across the x-axis? Choose the best answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. If we wanted to go across the x-axis, which means it's the horizontal, we want it going down or up, that's a vertical reflection, so it would need to be outside the f of x. Reading through these, we want to know when the negative is outside, so not grouped, which leads us to a. It doesn't matter if it's greater than 0 or less than 0, that determines how steep it is, but the fact that it's not grouped will get us to reflect over the x-axis. If it is grouped, it's going to go horizontally, which would make it the y-axis, so our correct answer would be a. Example 8. Reflections of linear functions across the y-axis. Describe how the graph of g of x equals the quantity negative 3x is related to the graph of the parent function. So again, we have two things here, a negative and a 3. So it's really negative 1 times the a value where a is 3 and then times x. That altogether gives us our function. This time, the constant is grouped with x. So we notice that number there is with x and it's greater than 1. So with x makes it horizontally, greater than 1 compresses it. So it's getting squished horizontally, making the line get steeper. The negative is also grouped with x, making it reflect across the y-axis. 
So overall, this was compressed horizontally by a factor of three and reflected over the y-axis due to that negative. Again, things inside the parentheses are horizontal. Check your understanding. Describe how the function given is related to the parent function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that the graph of negative 10x is the parent function compressed horizontally since it's inside and reflected across the y-axis. Since it's also inside, it's got to go horizontal left to right. 